Hello friends, welcome to the video lecture series of Mechanics of Material and the topic of today's lecture is Normal Stress. So, to understand this, let's revisit our first problem using which we have rediscovered the concept of force balance. Now, what we can see that is by using the static equilibrium, we can find the resultant internal balance at any cross section. But even the name says that it is a resultant. So, there must be some distribution which results into this resultant. So, the simple static equilibrium is not alone sufficient to describe the internal distribution of force. So, the concept of stress is introduced to quantify this internal forces and not the resultants. Now, what will happen when you apply the load? The shape of bracket or any member will change. So, it will deform. Thus, the concept of strain is introduced to predict the deformation in detail. So, what you can say is that stress and strain are related to each other and the dependency is established using the experiment stress and strain test. So, in this lecture, we are going to cover stress in detail and in our subsequent lecture, we, we, we will cover the strain. So, let's start our journey and yeah. So, stress are categorized as normal stress and the shear stress. So, normal stress from the name only, you can say that they are normal to the surface uh, and also the I think the most uh, more appropriate name is the axial stress. And the second one is the shear stress which is parallel to the surface. Now, first visualize this and then we will express this mathematically. So, to understand this, let us take a very simple case of bar and I am subjecting this bar with an axial loading of P. So, let us take that here P load is acting and same P load, X, P load is acting here. So, this here is P and here also it is P. Okay. So, in order to understand the concept in a better way, let us draw lines on the structure before application of the load. Like just assume that right now I am not applying the load P. So, I will draw the lines here. Um, yeah. So, these lines are uniformly distributed as you can see. Now, what I am doing is I am applying, I, I will, I will, I will observe here like uh, how these lines are changing due to the application of load. Now, load P is applied and see what you can see here is that the lines that are near to the circular holes are not uniform, but the lines that are in the middle, they are uniform. But what will happen when you will use the method of section? You will get the same resultant at each section. Okay. So, now I will express this or express all these things mathematically. So, let us go to the mathematical definition of normal stress. Yeah. So, normal stress is the force normal to the cross section divided by the area on which the force is acting. So, this area is the cross sectional area. Okay, So, if it is a rectangular bar, it will be the area of a rectangle. If it is a circular bar, bar that will be an area of a circle. Okay, So, one point to understand is that it is the area on which the force is acting. So, let us take a very basic example to understand this and let us assume a rectangular box of unit thickness. So, for simplest case, assume that the force is acting perpendicular to the area. So, the normal stress will be the F divided by A. So, here the force is here the force is F here and the area is the area of the rectangle. Now, just uh, so what will be the stress here normal stress average is equals to F divided by A. Now, let us add more complexity to it by applying a force which is inclined to some surface. Okay. So, now if I am saying that here F is acting at an angle theta to the horizontal. So, what will be the normal uh, horizontal component of this? So, the horizontal component of this this thing it will be F cos theta. Right. And area we uh, see we need to consider area which is perpendicular to the force. So, the area perpendicular to this F cos theta is same it will be A. So, again our normal stress average will be F cos theta divided by A. Now, I am adding more complexity to the situation. What I am doing is I am considering this inclined surface. So, this is the inclined surface that is in blue line. Uh, let me mark this. Yeah, this is an inclined surface on which I am taking the, I am calculating the norm average stress. So, what you will do here is our force is acting. Now, our force is acting at an angle, at, at a horizontally it is acting. But we need to take the inclined section. 
So what will be our force which is inclined to this? It will be this thing. It will be F cos theta. So this will be the F cos theta. Similarly, this is A. Right? This is A. So this will be A cos theta. Okay? So what will our normal stress will come? It will come as F cos theta divided by A divided by cos theta. So it will come as a F cos theta square. Okay? So this is the basic geometry. So you can pause the video and can try this. You will also get the same result. But see, here everywhere I'm mentioning is, what I'm mentioning is normal stress average. So what is the difference between the distributed stress and the normal stress? So let's move further and try to understand this thing. So, now I'm considering a random structure. Now in this case, let's take an elementary area, delta A. So this is the elementary area delta A on which del F is acting. So what you can define is that the normal stress is equals to limit delta A tends to 0 and del F divided by del A. Now what do you mean by that delta A tends to 0? It, it simply means that stress, is, stress are defined at a point. Now what you can say that this is for one point, right? Similarly, you can define this for this point, for this point and so on. So, if you take a resultant of all these normal stresses, what you will get is a norm, average normal stress whose resultant will be F and area is A. So, this Fx is a resultant of all the small small delta force, uh, norm, all the forces that are acting on this random structure. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll study this in, uh, in detail when we'll do the St. Minion principle. Now let's examine this in greater detail, the relationship between the distributed stress and the resultant. So if we write the stress in the differential form, the stress will be the del F divided by the delta A. Now just, so what will be the del F? Del F will be the sigma multiplied by delta A. Now if you want to calculate the total force, you need to integrate this equation, correct? So you will integrate the elementary force over the whole area and so what you will get is fx is equals to integration of sigma into delta A. Now let's assume that fx is a resultant force which is well, like uh, we are you are converting this distributed force into the average one so fx is the look here, uh, resultant force which is acting at a distance of zr from the y-axis and y-r from the z-axis. So let me mark the locations here. See, this is the z-r which is at a distance of like which is uh, we have what we are measuring from uh, y-axis and this is y-r. Now fx you can calculate but it, it, it is not like it is acting at any random position. It has some specific position. So how you will calculate this? So in, to find what we will do is we will do the moment balance. Why moment balance? Because there is no external load at the internal boundary. Therefore, the net moment must be zero. So what is the next step? You need to do the moment balance and you can find the ZR and the YR. That means you can find where this FX is acting. So let's write the moment balance equation. Now my FX is acting at a distance of ZR. And similarly, here my f that uh, that we that we have defined here is acting at a distance of z. Okay, so what we have to do that the moment created by this resultant force it should equate the moment created by this internal and distributed force. Then 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 only the uh, our uh, structure is in equilibrium, right? So if you equate this this f x multiplied by ZR that will be the moment FX is a force and ZR is a perpendicular distance so FX multiplied by ZR equals to Sigma DA into Z and then you have to integrate it how see as you can see here DF is equals to Sigma into DA correct so this is the DF that is a force and force which is acting at a distance of Z so force multiplied by z is the moment and since it's a distributed moment you are integrating it over the area a 
So when you solve this, what you will get here is ZR. Similarly, this FX, this FX is also creating a moment about the Z axis, right? So again, to find the location YR, what you'll do is the moment balance again. So what, what equation will come is YR multiplied by FX, that is a moment by the resultant force is equals to negative of so again we have to we are doing the same thing sigma into da that is a force multiplied by its area and then again you are integrating so again this is the force that we have done before y is again the distance that I know I have not marked y let me mark see this is y so y is again the distance and you are integrating it integrating with uh, for the area a so for getting the total moment of the distributed force and then you are equating it with this external for this sorry not external for this resultant force okay so using this what you can find is zr and yr and this minus result this is just the uh, sign convention so if you're considering clockwise as positive then automatically anti clockwise anti clockwise will come as negative okay so using this what you can find is zr and yr so that means you uh, first you can find the resultant force and then you can find the location of the resultant force so both things are done now let's consider a case where i'm saying that uh, your normal stress is distributed over the cross section so if your normal stress is distributed over the cross section your distributed force will also be will be it will be constant okay So for this special case where your normal stress distribution is constant over a cross section, your fx will be the integration of sigma x into dA and A. Now I am saying that stress is constant, that means you can take sigma x outside. So what will come here is hmm, this equation. So fx is equal to sigma x since it's a constant and integration of dA which will give you fx is equal to sigma x multiplied by A. Now using that using the previous equation that we have find out again you'll take you'll take uh, sigma x uh, in the uh, sigma x outside since it's a constant value what you'll get is this thing now if you'll see this this term this term if you'll see this term so can you relate this term with the first moment of inertia and you will get here is sigma sorry zcg multiplied by the integration of da this is a 11 standard physics so if you're not uh, getting this just turn some pages so what what will be our final equation it will come as zr into fx is equals to sigma x into zcg uh, z of cg sorry so this fx and sigma x and a this we have already calculated here first first thing only this these are these things are equal so that means you can cancel those things so what you will get is zr is equals to zcg so what is the conclusion here the conclusion here is your zr is equals to zcg only and only if your normal stress is uniform over the cross section that means if your normal stress is uniform over the cross section, it will act at the centroid of cross section. One more thing we need to consider here is the length of the bar. See, if if your cross section is varying along the length of the bar, then this this uh, conclusion that we have made is not valid. So we will see that in upcoming lectures. But for now you can say that okay if your bar is uniform your force for your resultant force will act at the cg of the bar okay the cg of the cross section so, so what are the conditions for the uniform normal stress in bar uh, yeah so first thing is okay uh -huh. so first thing is that your bar should be prismatic prismatic means that its area should be constant along the length then it should be homogeneous that it should be, it should be the same material then equal and opposite load p or anything that is acting it should it should be equal on the both sides then your resultant force will act at the center then resultant force at centroid of cross section automatically if all these string three things are there then your resultant force will act at the center of cross section we have already
prove this in our in the last section only so we have covered everything about the basics of normal stress so let's solve one problem and uh, what if you have any doubt i think they will be gone after after that okay so what is the example now two rods are there which are welded at a point b to form a single rod the 30 kN force at B is uniformly distributed around the circumference of collar at B and a 10 kN load is applied at C and also it is a cross section of the uh, sorry centroid of the cross section so now what we have to find is the axial stress in each portion of rod so now let's pause for a moment and check that the assumption for nor uniform stress whether they are valid here or not now you can see that the, all the points are valid for that we need what we need to do is we need to divide this bar into two portions like ab and bc and then only our all points are valid and this is what we are going to do because we are ignoring the same venant effect here for now we are ignoring that effect and we are going to separate this bar into two uh, two uh, two sections and we are going to solve this so to understand this let's start solving the problem by considering the free body diagram of bars individually now set the sign conventions we are taking tension is positive so let's solve the problem to find the stress so first make the free body diagram here see so this is the other view so your first section the c section 10 kN if you will divide this you will get f1 on the other side then now at point c 10 kN is acting that is at the free end so from point b to c what will what 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 force will act is the 10 kN so you can see you can check here is till till b the only fo unknown force what we have is f1 but at point at junction of b when you will divide this what you will get is f2 that means we have two forces f1 and f2 when you are dividing the body into two portions so what we need to do is we need to find this f1 and f2 so let's start mm, yeah. so using force balance along the cut line that means in the first section if 10 kN is acting in this direction that is tension so that means f1 also it's a it is also a positive force only so what you'll get f1 as the 10 kN because for equilibrium f1 should equals to 10 kN so whatever is the d1 whatever 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 is the diameter of uh, part bc you will calculate the area so what will come it is the area of the cross section so it will come as pi by 4 d1 square so your stress will come with uh, um, yeah so your axial stress in bc will be equal to f1 divided by a1 where a1 is equals to pi by 4 into d1 square right now you need to go for this bc now since force is acting at point b you need you don't know like what how much is in resultant force is acting at point b so you need to calculate that first what you can do here is see your 10 kN force is acting in this direction which we have taken as positive and then the 30 kN is acting in this direction okay so this is the 10 kN let me mark this this is the 10 kN and this is the 30 kN right so what is the resultant force so we will take from the positive direction only so what you will get here is the f2 is equals to 10 kN minus of 30 kN so it will come as a minus of 20 kN similarly what is the area it would it is see d1 is not equals to d2 okay so your area will come as a2 will come as pi by 4 d2 square so if d1 and d2 are known to you so you, you know if it is like this uh, uh, if it is like this body just separate the body if either either in one two or if it is three section also you can separate the body in three halves at every junction do the force balance and calculate the axial stresses okay so this was the first problem we have done in the uh, subsequent lectures we will cover some more problem so that uh, your all doubts will be cleared okay thank you and uh, 
If you like the video, please subscribe for more interesting videos. Thank you.